Good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Young. I'm the owner and founder of Adapted Perspective and the Adapted and the Adapted Perspective social media platforms. Uh, and I'm back with another strategy session uh, on the market at large and how we can use closed-in funds to improve our investing. Now, this is an unedited video, so who knows what else you'll hear in the background as I film these in my house. I am not a financial advisor. I am a financial strategist, and I don't speak like the herd. Uh, I, Quite honestly, I make mistakes, and you get to see all that on the raw video. So normally, I go into this giant spiel. Um, and I talk about strategy and the code we follow and all this stuff, but which I think is important. I'm not downplaying, I'm not downplaying that. It's just I wanted a more I wanted a I wanted a common sense approach to the Fed's meeting next week. So the Fed meets next week and the Fed has hinted at that they're going to cut rates. And there's a ton of people predicting that they're going to cut rates, finally. So without getting into all the other stuff that we've talked about the last, I don't know, month, two months, three months, let's just look at how things go traditionally. So the Fed causes inflation. They print a ton of money. They raise rates and then they control inflation and they lower inflation. Supposedly we haven't seen that, but we, they lower inflation and then eventually they cut rates. And then we have some type of landing, whether that be a hard landing or a soft landing, we either have, uh, we have a slowing economy and we enter a recession and how long we stay in the recession uh, really, I think, matters uh, who's in charge of the rest of the country. But how long we stay in the recession is still an unknown right now. And, and all of that's important because it really does influence what we buy. So knowing that, knowing that cycle, right, like the Fed jacked rates fast fastest, quickest, however you want to say, highest in history, left them there for a while. And now we've we've finally seen overall interest rates fall a little bit. But when the Fed cuts rates, everything should improve. So it's kind of like, why not buy anything, right? Because if, if the Fed cuts rates, the market will respond, people will be happy. It's not really changing a ton of things right now but it's the hope that things will continue to get better. And the market always looks forward. It looks past the irrationality of buying a lot right now because it looks forward, hoping that the Fed will continue to cut rates. So what does that do to the market overall? Traditionally, historically, everything goes up, but in a recession, stocks go down. So if the Fed cuts rates, yes, everything in theory should go up. But with the looming recession, stocks will go down. So what should we buy? Well, if you're going to buy anything, we're almost, almost too late to the party on a lot of stuff. But if you're going to buy anything, and if we were going to buy tomorrow, which we're not, but if we were going to buy tomorrow, we would buy bonds. Um, so if the Fed cuts rates, Bonds will do great. If we hit a recession, which I still I still think we're headed towards a recession. If we hit a recession, stock prices will go down. Bond prices will go further up than what they already are. So if the Fed cuts rates, everything should go up, bonds included. If we hit a recession, bonds should also go up. So I still think bonds are the better play. I think it's the best play right now. But it really comes down to what you're choosing. If you're going for a single entity, that's not our style. I mean, we like closed-end funds. There are a lot of a lot of great bond companies are harder to find in significant discount territory because bonds have gone up. Bloomberg finally hopped on the bond the bond bandwagon and helped send higher or helped send prices higher. There we go. 
Um, so there are still some some bargains out there. It's just they're becoming fewer because of how the market's changing. So if we look at how this shakes out for the week, which uh, this is not the full, I mean, this is the full closed-in fund master. Everything that's color-coded gets updated weekly. The normal spiel, and I'm not going to get into the normal spiel. Uh, and I've already sorted and moved everything into this spreadsheet. So now we just, we look at what we want to target. We want monthly payers. We want not all net asset value. We want yield. Uh, so we want monthly payers. More importantly, let me go back to, we want bonds. Now, stocks are interesting. I mean, I, I get it. You could make a case for it. You could buy it now. Uh, hope the Fed cuts rates, have those stocks go up, and then hope to sell it before recession or at the beginning of the recession or at whatever point we are in recession, to be honest. Um, but I think you get a better value with bonds. So in that, we want to sort based on you. Did I still sort on NAV? I did still sort on NAV. Why is it interesting? Every week I make these videos and it's always got the same stuff at the top. Always. And every week Google Sheets has a has a different mindset of how it should work. <sighs> So bonds, we want to target stuff that's 9% and above. Power flicker, interesting. Um, you could make a case for a municipal bond, but I honestly don't want to pay that much. So we can get rid of this just based on premise. And normally, I, I'll be the first to tell you, normally this one stays on the list. I mean, I get it. Bonds, real estate, senior loans, corporate loan, uh, corporate bonds. Uh, what am I forgetting? Uh, CLO is collateralized loan obligation. All of those should go well with a rate cut. Um, I, mean, I, I could make a case for buying something fifty percent off, but if we're if we're truly going to laser focus on bonds, as tempting as the price is at 50% off or really 52% off almost, we have to pass it by. So if we laser focus on bonds, that means we also have to get rid of some other stuff. That's a mixed portfolio. Maggie is all utilities. Technology stocks. So it's a mixed bag. It's on my hit list. It really is. It's on my wish list between this and one of its sister companies. But it's that thing of it's all stocks. So if we're going to prioritize bonds, it's got to be one of these three. And it's going to come down to what you have and what your overall uh, frame of mind is related to bonds. This is a shareholder activist bond account. It's primarily bonds and loans, but they also have other closed-in funds. They've got, uh, God, they've got tons of access now. Uh, and they're trying to change the shareholder scene amongst the closed-in fund companies. I like that idea. FCO and CIF are both super, super high fixed income bond companies, corporate bonds especially, and they're on either end of the pendulum in, in overall assets. FSCO is its own private lender. It's an all-American company. It's it's heavy weighted in corporate bonds and heavy weighted in high fixed income. BRW is heavy weighted in bonds, but at the same time doesn't have a lot of high fixed income. So FCO has at least 2.3. It's gone up almost every month. So at least 2.3 billion in overall assets. They're, they are their own lender. They 
They deal with corporate bonds. It's all American based. And CIF is similarly structured. However, it's on the other end of the pendulum. It's 33, 35 million in assets. Uh, still almost a primary, uh, almost US or almost a primarily American company and super high fixed income. So it kind of depends on the bond market at large and where you want things to be as of what we have. And yes, I mean, this is our portfolio that we manage through Weevil. So if we look at BRW, CIF, FFCO, FCO, there we go. So BRW, FC. That is not where I want. I want this. BRW, FCO, CIF. Of the shares, where are you? Um, made it at decent pricing. We go back and get into the nitty gritty of things. 7-11-33. CO-610. CIF 1.74 because it's going to round. Uh, all of these would be slightly higher than what we already own. Uh, so it's kind of a moot point there. They're all similar in share, uh, share number, share quantity. It really just comes down to money. And our strategy has been to keep a base amount in the in the fund uh allow the dividends to come in whatever we have at the time so at the end of this month we'll get about 120 dollars based on this line so we'll get about 120 dollars at the end of the month we'll add to that that'll be about 200 dollars, and then we'll see where that takes us if they cut rates and everything skyrockets, then honestly, we'll just hold. Um, we don't have to buy something. We don't have to buy something just to buy something. I'm quite happy to let the market ramp up and let share value increase. Uh, hopefully, honestly, uh, watch the dividends increase and then reevaluate and buy the next cycle. So for us, we're not buying anything Monday. We don't have one, we don't have the money for it. Two, I, I like our positions as it is. If we had the money, would we pick up a set? If anything, we'd pick up another 100 shares of CIF, if anything, but that's just based on what we have. Um, but yeah, that's really it. Um, it. If the Fed responds, which I think they will, or maybe at this point, I hope they will. The Fed has been slow to respond. So if the Fed cuts rates, you can expect the market to respond. Everything will jump up. Consumer confidence will jump up. Now, that doesn't mean the economy is healthy. That doesn't even mean inflation is under control. That just means the Fed cut rate. The Fed cuts rates. And those rates also impact a lot, a lot of other things. Home loans, car loans, more, you know, all the stuff. So credit card stuff. So, yeah, it really doesn't mean it would be amazing if the economy was healthy, but it's not. The economy is slowing. The, the last few jobs reports have pointed to a bigger issue of the Department of Labor lying about the jobs reports. Uh, yeah, core inflation data went up. Everything, everything cost more now than it did last month in the Fed is about to cut rates, we hope, saying that inflation is now under control. So something doesn't make sense. Um, but if the Fed cuts rates, the people who swear by the Fed will be like, oh, my gosh, inflation's under control. Now we can buy a little more. Now that injects some hope into the economy and into the populace, and the market will respond. The question becomes, how long? Um, if they cut if they cut rates multiple months in a row, we, we keep that hope, but it, it does, it does not wash away the recession fears. So for us, we're staying away from stocks. 
uh, they're tempting, but they're also still more pricey than they were two months ago. Uh, I'd much rather buy stocks at a recession dip than buy stocks high and have it crash during a recession. So we're, if anything, we would go bonds, but we're not going to do anything right now. So if I were you, or maybe if you were me, however that works, uh, do your research, see what your portfolio needs, see what your focus is, see what your long-term goals are. And if you buy anything, me, yes, I would buy bond, but it's your portfolio and your money. So do with it what you want. Uh, for us, it's bonds, it's closed in fund bonds because you get a better deal and a better dividend, better access, less risk. Uh, and if we're buying anything, we're buying one of these three. But at the same time, like I already said, we're not buying anything at all. So I think I will stop talking in circles. Uh, I wish, I get it's a very different video uh, for a lot of reasons. One, I wanted a, I wanted a, a video that was not drawn out on data like normal. Uh, I also wanted a shorter video. And quite honestly, I am tired. I worked my tail off today, sweating in my garage, working on a new table. And I am exhausted. So uh, whatever you have for the week, I hope it goes well. I mean, we're all hoping the Fed cuts rates, but if the Fed leaves rates the same, I still hope your week goes well. Um, it, biggest, the biggest ongoing message I can give you is that if you have no idea where you're going and no idea how to get there, Playing in the stock market is not the outright solution you want. It has this glamorous light about it, that there's so much potential in the market. And there is to an extent. But you gotta know what you're doing. You gotta have a you gotta have a strategy. And if you're just throwing darts at a wall hoping you hit a bullseye, that's not helping you out. So if you really want to figure out where it is that you want to go, and if you really want to figure out a strategy to, to help you get from where you are to where you want to be, then come find me on Facebook. Check out my page there called Navigate Your Finances, where I get into the step-by-step -step play of getting from where you are to where you want to be, and then beyond that, and how to have that mentality as you uh, step your way or as your boat sails that way into that lifestyle. It's not just a, I won the lottery and my problems are gone. Uh, it's not a, I picked the right stock and it exploded. And now I have no problems. It's, you've got to learn to manage your money. You've got to learn a financial system and you've got to have a lot more strategy than what you really have in order to successfully navigate the finances, but also to successfully maintain and grow it. If, if if we made a treasure map and we put your boat on the map and then somewhere in the distance we drew in a, a deserted island with the X marks the spots, intertwined coconut trees, and underneath those trees was whatever treasure chest you're hoping to find, whatever that means for you, without strategy, your journey ends on the island. Because you, you open the chest and then that's it. You spend it. You have fun, right? Life goes on. But there's so much more to life after you accomplish that dream. So if you want to keep sailing and you want to keep living, you've got to have a strategy in place to where those dreams don't become endings. They just become points on a map. Right? Like... I have these I have these marks and they're all goals and I hit my dream and that's my goal. But there's also so much more to be had, more to be lived, more to more to experience on the other side of that island. It's not like you reach the treasure and die. It's like you reach the treasure and move forward with it, knowing that you're not going to blow it on the next port of call that you're actually going to do something with it. You're going to do more with more, right? Continue to build your business, continue to help more people out, continue to live your life. 
and, fi- and find and have and enjoy that level of financial freedom that you found on the island. It's not that you reach it and that's it. It's that you reach it and keep going. So if that hits a button with you, if that if that sounds like something you need help with, come find me on Facebook and check me out there. Because I do. I post all of that stuff on Facebook. I, I post closed-in funds and financial strategy on YouTube. I house the, the 12 steps to, fi- to financial freedom on Facebook and walk you through it day to day. So whatever you have for the week, I hope it goes well. And whatever you have beyond this week, I hope that goes well. Whatever journey that you're on, I hope that you're making progress. But if you're stalled out or need help, or just want somebody to chat with, come find me on Facebook and let's get you going again. So I wish you well, and I wish you a great week, and I wish you a great beyond the week. So see y'all on another video. Bye-bye.